Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wild Your Garden. And in this video, I want to talk to you about what I believe is a massively overlooked and underrated wildflower. And that is, of course, these cracking little dandelions where they actually get the name, it's believed, uh, Dante de Leon. Dante meaning teeth, de Leon of lion, which means teeth of the lion. I'm not sure how true that is. I've never inspected a lion's mouth too closely. <laughs> but the name Dante de Leon apparently got changed over time into dandelion. Um, yes, and that's where he's got its name from. So uh, interesting bit of myth there for you. But I want to talk to you about the dandelion because I think it is an absolutely vital wildflower and one that provides so much pollen and nectar for our pollinating insects at this time of year. Now it's the middle of April now but they've been around for a few weeks and they really are very good for providing that pollen nectar for all the sorts of early emerging butterfly species, things such as red admiral, peacock, small tortoiseshell, uh, moths, pollen beetles as well. So many insects, it's unbelievable. I'll put a few clips in obviously of some uh, pollen beetles I saw the other day. Absolutely just covered, and I mean covered, in, uh, in these beetles, some of the flower heads that I saw, so absolutely fantastic. But the dandelion has a lot of bad press and stay with me on this one because I really feel like there's an issue to address here. Now, the other day I was driving through um, Essex and a little village and I was just going slow and I happened to see someone in the front garden just bent over um, on the front lawn and he had a pair of little sort of hand sort of shears but we sort of squeeze them from the top and they're sort of sideways acting it doesn't matter anyway and he was bent over and I kid you not he was snipping the live flower heads off the dandelions which were fractionally above his half inch of grass now and I saw it again a, a few years back I've seen it many times actually but I saw it again a few years back when I was working on a wildlife garden in Leeds that was featured on channel 5 and I saw a woman, I was sat in my truck out the front, I was just having my lunch, and I saw a woman come down her driveway from the house opposite. She had a little mown lawn out the front. She got to the end of her driveway, she turned left, and then she stopped dead in her tracks, turned round, walked back a couple of paces, walked onto the grass, and actually almost <laughs> angrily removed, you know, as if to say, what the hell are you doing in my lawn? Removed the dandelion head flower head bright yellow flower head from the middle of the lawn put it in a pocket looked very pleased with herself and walked off and went about her daily life and i mean it's just balmy it really is i mean in today's world where i'm you know really i shouldn't be laughing about it i, I am laughing about it but i shouldn't be because you know we have to question what our thinking is if our idea of a garden or our idea of perfection is a perfectly green sterile landscape that is void of flowers and it's not just dandelions obviously people don't like to see different wildflowers within their lawns a lot of the time they want it as just grass now i think this is something that stemmed from the 70s and the 80s back in that that era it was a bit of a fad to have perfectly striped mown lawns um, conifers roses standard roses it but that was like nearly 40 years ago but yet it seems things haven't changed and there are now many 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 companies and i'm sure gardening programs and garden centers wherever you go in the northern hemisphere i guarantee you you walk into a garden center or you put the tv on and you'll see an advert for a lawn doctor or you know some kind of management some kind of weed killer that will remove weed species now i think this needs addressing because to me the word weed the way we use it in today's language refers to something that we would regard as not wanted uh, a plant that's not wanted within our lawn or garden or board or wherever but to me there is no such thing as a weed a weed is just a wildflower in the wrong place and there shouldn't even need to be the word weed it should not exist <laughs> in my mind because you know what harm are these plants doing in all seriousness now unless we change the way we see our gardens unless we change the way we manage our countryside we are going to lose 
our wildflowers. And I don't just mean dandelions, I mean many, many wildflowers. Now in the UK alone, we've lost 97% of our wildflower meadows in the last century, which is a staggering statistic and one that I, I've known about for a long time and I still can't get my head around. And obviously I go around the country trying to create wildflower meadows and I've made over 15 acres now in my career of over eight, 17, 18 years. And I will still continue to make wildflowers until, until I can't stand on wildflower meadows until I can no longer stand. But, you know, the point I'm making is, unfortunately, I don't know what it's like where you live. Please let me know in the comments below. But quite often the verges on along the roads in which we drive are very often the last refuge for a lot of our wildflower species and unfortunately that is becoming far too commonplace now that's partly due to the intensification of agricultural practices farming techniques uh, the increased use of pesticides and obviously broadleaf herbicides which will you know wipe out plants like this so the people that are coming around to treat your lawn for weed species they're going to wipe out the dandelions red clover bird's foot trefoil self heal uh, lesser celandine primrose cowslip i could go on white clover it's just it's endless the amount of wildflowers and even things just like black medic which people see as a weed species is a secondary larval food plant for things like the common blue butterfly and you know all these wildflowers are going to be wiped out in our back gardens if we continue to use um, broadleaf herbicides which will kill everything bar the grass and I say it again I cannot understand where the pride is or maybe it was 30 40 years ago but where the pride is and the enjoyment comes from from knowing that you have a perfectly sterile piece of grass that's half an inch long I just cannot get my head around it. If I'm missing the point, please let me know. But I really am at a loss as to why we would want to remove this cracking little wildflower, which as I say, is a vital plant in um, helping many insects. Now with all the insect declines we hear about with climate change, it seems absurd that we are removing these from our landscape. And, you know, I, not only is it sad that a lot of our wildflower meadows are now refined to our roadside verges. I genuinely looked high and low for dandelions to bring you this video. It's taken me weeks to actually make this video. And if and I had no idea when I said to myself early on in the season, right, this year, dandelions, that's it, the video's coming. If I'd have known how long I would have had to look until I found a sustainable patch of dandelions for me to film to bring you guys this video, I don't know whether I'd have carried on searching because genuinely, I mean, I searched through my local park. I searched for at least three quarters of an hour. I didn't find a single dandelion in several acres of mown areas, which are public spaces. So I think we need to start asking some questions. And why aren't these dandelions in these places? Yes, okay, there were a few daisies. Um, and I think dandelions generally do prefer kind of less regularly mown lawns or areas so you know constant mowing won't they don't think i don't think they take too well to it but i think if you can let your lawn grow a little bit higher please do you know just set your mower height to as high as height as possible you know two or three inches and that way you will be able to let things like your red clover your bird's foot trefoil your dandelions and your daisies and cell feel and everything grow and just watch how many insects come into your garden. And if you do nothing else, please put your mower away, mower away for a bit. I know there is the no mow may here in, in, um, in the UK where people don't mow their lawns. And it's amazing because if you have a piece of grass that isn't, uh, that has been a piece of grass for many, many years, it's amazing actually how many wildflowers are already there waiting to flower. They've just never been given the chance because they've been mown and mown and mown. Now, and it's a bit like our roadside verges, which I'll be doing more videos on as we go through through the year, further into the year, where, you know, it really does pain me to see our roadside verges moan at a key time when it is July quite often the time. It's Natural England's um, policy to to mow triple SI grassland half the time in July, which, as I say, story for another day. 
but it really really bugs me and um, I will be bringing you more videos of that in videos to come but uh, let's take a moment to have a a bit of a a clap for the uh, <laughs> the dandelion I think it is a wonderful little wildflower it'll grow almost anywhere it'll grow in oh the edge of a road in a curb it'll grow in a top of a chimney it'll grow in sandy soils clay soils it really is a very versatile wildflower and one that you definitely should have in your garden now if you haven't got any we do sell some of the wildy garden shop i never thought the day would come when i'd be um, offering dandelions to sell people <laughs> or for people to buy i think it's uh, it's crazy but they are um, i'm not saying they're de declining throughout the countryside clearly not but you know certainly in our urban areas i think that there are few and far they are few and far between um, so yes, please if you can share this video, share it with your local councils, share it with your local um, landowners, you know, try to get them to lift the mower height if nothing else to allow plants to grow a little bit longer so they can flower, they can carry out the life cycle because if you don't lift the height of the cutting um, equipment that you're using, you're cutting the flower heads off all the time and therefore they're never going to produce seed, they're never going to spread and eventually those flowers just get mulched out uh, and mown out and in time we'll just end up with nettles and grass and docks, things that you know will thrive in the fertile areas. So yes, I think my main point for today's video is that try to spread some awareness if you can if you are going to um, you know manage these areas differently if you know people that manage these areas try and get them to uh, manage them in a way so that they can let these wildflowers survive because they are as I say just stricken it seems to our roadside verges so I'd really appreciate it if you can pass the message on guys thank you so much for watching and please feel free to subscribe to the channel and give the video a like if you have enjoyed the video and I'll be sure to bring you many more videos on all the ways in which you can help wildlife in videos to come. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.